hello guys welcome to ds from scratch in this uh, video i want to uh, do linear regression using uh, cdo inverse previously we did uh, linear regression using gradient descent in which we were uh, optimizing the uh, weight and bias values but in this uh, uh, particular video and using this uh, methodology we will be uh, directly finding that w and the bias which we will not need further uh, uh, optimizing the w uh, the, the w and bias values okay so let's start with importing the data uh, we will be using the uh, tv marketing data which i have downloaded from the kegel uh, website so in this data set we have uh, two features one is a tv uh, advertisement and the other one which is our target value and uh, it is a sales how much the tv advertisement has uh, put uh, impact on the sales of a market okay so we have uh, input value as tv and uh, tv advertisement and uh, output value as sales let's separate them into input and output input is equal so we can say data tv okay and output which is target value is equal to data as sales okay so now we have input and out uh, and a target value uh, so for uh, convenient uh, for the later we can uh, change the data into array so now we it is in data frame uh, format we have to change it to uh, array format so we can use it simple okay so we can say np dot array okay in so when we, we are converting to array as a uh, input is uh, only one dimension so it will get only uh, one dimensional array but we want to add another access uh, new access so because the later we will be using uh, we should have an array of two dimension in p dot array of target then we will say create a new access new access okay so now let's print the shape of input and output input dot shape and target dot shape okay so this is the shape of our data input uh, data and target values okay so uh, now let's just uh, normalize the values for input input minus np dot main of uh, np over np dot max of input values minus np dot min of uh, input values okay so let's take the numerator also in parenthesis let's uh, see how the values will look after normalizing okay so after normalizing you can see it is between 0 and 1 okay you can see you can see here it was 230 now it is around 0 0.7 okay so now we have converted the data uh, normalized the data and converted to the range of 0 between 0 and 1 so after the next step uh, will be calculating the inverse of the uh, inverse of the matrix so for c do inverse uh, for c do inverse what we need is uh, what's the, the logic between the c do inverse the c do inverse says that equation of a matrix it is like a times x is equals to like suppose b a is a constant number or a simple number b is a matrix okay as x is a matrix sorry and b is a target value which is also matrix okay so in this uh, simple form if x is a square matrix like suppose x is equals to 1 2 3 4 5 6 i'm just giving an example of a matrix 7 8 9 it is a matrix of 3 okay it's a matrix of 3 by 3 only but uh, if this is 3 by 3 what we do simply is a times x times x inverse 
is equals to v times x inverse just simply we multiply inverse of the matrix in both sides of the equation in this uh, uh, in this format what happens is x x and x inverse will get cancelled and we will uh, we having a is equals to v times x inverse which we simply can calculate the a but uh, in uh, a real life equation the x matrix will not always be square matrix okay it means that the the number of rows will not always be equal to the number of columns but in real life our x can be like thousand rows by three columns okay hundred rows by two columns okay so these things will happen in real life but what if we have these shapes what is the possible solution in that case like if you have a times x is equals to b is equals to b and your x is not a square value here comes the pseudo method in pseudo method he says that the inverse of the inverse of a non square matrix is equals to its transpose times the matrix itself inverse of that when you calculate the transpose of a matrix to matrix itself it will give you a, a square matrix so the inverse of this matrix times the matrix itself so the uh, times the transpose of the matrix will give you the inverse of the matrix so we will calculate we will add this uh, inverse of the matrix or we will calculate this inverse of the matrix to both side of the equation that's how we can get a so we can say that a is equals a times okay x x times this there okay x transpose times x inverse of this term times x transpose is equals to b times x transpose times x and uh, inverse of this term times x transpose we know that inverse of a matrix multiplied by matrix itself will cancel each other okay so finally we will be having only a is equals to b times x transpose times x inverse inverse of this whole term times x transpose this is how we can get the a value so for if we are using the uh, python the simple function in python is np dot linear algebra linear algebra dot p inverse p inverse of x it will when you use this function it will just directly give you the inverse of this so in this case we have calculated a which is our weight value okay it was like w times x is equals to b okay so it will give us weight what about bias if we want to calculate the bias for calculating the bias what we have to do is we have to add one more column to our x value so our x if our x was like some values here some values here some values here like x1 suppose x2 x3 like this here xn xn3 right if we have this uh, many columns we can just add one more column here one more column of only one values okay if we inverse this if we inverse this then our final inverted uh, x like suppose inverted x will be like uh, this will be the number of columns okay the number of rows will change to columns column will change to rows this row this row this row will be these values okay this value first row this value second row this value third row then the final row will be be having one 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 okay when we have these values when we have these values and when the target value the target value or the b value gets dot product to this 
dot product to this okay the summation of the dot product with this will give us w okay w w and the last value will be bias okay so this is how we will uh, we can calculate the weight and bias at the same time using the c2 we have the input uh, the normalized values values of the uh, input what we can do is we can find the inverse of the input we can say that inverse of input there is a function in uh, numpy it is numpy mp dot linear algebra dot p inverse okay p inverse of input values okay now if we look at the shape of the inverse uh, in inverted uh, input this will be the values and if we look at the shape this is the shape 1 to 200 okay so after finding finding the inverse what we can do is we can simply say that w is equals to np dot, dot product of inverse input and or get it will give us directly the w value you can say that this is the w value now using this w value we can simply predict our uh, uh, our y value y is equal to np dot numpy dot dot product of our input and uh, w so this is our y you can print it this is the y value now let's see the mean square of the mean square error of predicted versus the target value np dot mean np dot square np dot square of target minus y value let's print and see okay so this is our mean square error which is 23.24 which is very high but why it is very high because we haven't included that bias theorem here we have only weight now let's include bias theorem as i explained uh, in the terminology so we have to uh, we have to uh, add one more identity column a column of only one and that column will help us to get the bias values okay so now let's see say that new input values is equals to np dot uh, h stack okay we will stack one more column to our input values input and np dot ones ones okay of input dot shape the number of samples and which will have only one column now let's print the new input values this is our new input values which has one more column of one 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 okay so now let's uh, just take the inverse of this value okay inverse of new input values is equal to np dot linear algebra dot c2 inverse of a new input value now let's uh, just in this value okay so these are the values we can look at the shape of the values okay so 2 into 200 previously we had only uh, one row now we have two rows and 200 columns okay so using that we can calculate weight and bias we can name this uh, variable as wd which will include weight and bias np dot dot product of input and uh, okay okay so we have the inverse we can uh, say that w in uh, inverse of new input with or get values it will give us the values of weight and bias okay let's print so this is this the first value will be the weight and the last value if you have different uh, multiple weights so then uh, last value will be the bias all other values will be our weight okay so now we have weight and we have bias we can calculate okay we can say the predicted values is equals to np dot dot product of input and uh, weight and bias that we can we uh, say that the first row and first column is our weight 
and plus bias and uh, second row of the first column is second row of the first column is the bias okay let's train the print values okay so this is our predicted values now we can calculate the msc values of this using uh, the same msc equation just copy paste the msc equation okay msc now let's print it okay now this is 23.24 okay which is again uh, not very good okay Okay, so we have to change here or not why we can say break. Okay, so now this is our new MSC which is 10.51. Previously it was uh, something around the 23, I think. Yes, it was 23.24 and now it is uh, 10.51. So we got this value, but what if uh, we did only this one iteration? We cannot do this multiple iteration, it is not a learning. Uh, algorithm it cannot let it will just use one equation so let's compare this with uh, available algorithms like linear regression using gradient descent from scalar this from scalar from scalar dot linear linear model we can say that import linear regression okay so our model is equals to linear regression okay control enter so we can say that model dot fit input and target okay so the model has fit now let's take the model uh, weight and bias model dot uh, coefficient okay this will give us the w and this is equals to model dot uh, intercept it will give us the bias value okay uh, linear regression of this intercept and this is on the intercept okay so this is our weight and bias using the intercept value now let's uh, do prediction using our model we can say print model is equals to uh, w or np dot dot product of input and the w model plus v model okay so this will be our predicted values let's just print it okay so this is the pre uh, predicted values now let's check the msc values how much the msc control c okay so instead of print we have to put this uh, value print model okay print model okay now this is the msc from linear regression of uh, which we have imported from scalar it is 10.51 it is 10.51 okay using cd inverse and this is using graded this is so cd inverse is a very uh, strong algorithm very good equation so uh, in some cases for linear regression you have to train the model multiple times so you reach your optimal values but in uh, C universe you just have to run it one time and it will save you uh, your time and also computationally it is also cheap okay thank you very much for watching this video and uh, if you like this video and if you have learned something from this video please like and subscribe Thank you so much.